Today on Getting Real with the Housewives, Sutton Strack breaks down her Magic mic standoff with Erica Jane. I, sh I show up, put on my microphone, and sometimes I say things that I shouldn't, and I always run into trouble. I always step into things. Plus, Ashley Darby reveals where she stands with Candace Dillard. Where we go off the rails is when there's conflict and how she handles conflict and her ability to be accountable mm -hmm. for what she says. Sonia Richards-Ross out of Real Housewives of Atlanta. Well, we caught up with her before the rumors started swirling. I think if we had a little bit more time to build genuine friendships, I think what the fans are used to was when the show started, they were real friends. They all lived in Atlanta together. They had history and it takes time to build that. Plus, Mauricio tells people to F off when it comes to his marriage and Andy gives details on Shep and Bryn's BravoCon run-in. We've got that plus so much more on today's Getting Real with the Housewives. Hey guys, Christina Garibaldi here and welcome to another big week of Getting Real with the Housewives. Lots to get to, so let's get right into your comments from last week's show. Jewel says, listen, I'd rather people tell the truth so that everyone else at least understands the whole picture. It's like someone saying they just use great skincare, but you know deep down they get a facial every month and they regularly get Botox and their skincare is just amazing. Just tell us the full story. This, of course, talking about the Ozempic story from last week. I totally agree with you. At least they are being upfront about it and not giving you this fantasy story about their fantastic skincare. And then Adeline says, Drew didn't come either to BravoCon. Very good point. I totally missed that. Drew Sedora was not there and these rumors could be a little telling. So let's get into the news of the week because Drew and Sonia are two of the latest additions to The Real Housewives of Atlanta, but it seems as if they may not be returning for season 16. So the two of them removed the show from their Instagram bios, and the news came at a time when rumors were swirling about the show doing a reboot in the same way that The Real Housewives of New York did with the season 14 cast. Well, Drew just joined the cast in season 13. Sonia joined the following season. However, I did notice that Sonia did add back the hashtag Real Housewives of Atlanta to her Instagram profile. So who knows what's going on here? I would be kind of surprised if Drew didn't come back considering what happened with Ralph last season her epic moment at the reunion I feel like there's definitely more story there but we did catch up with a lot of the cast at BravoCon about it specifically Sonia and here's what she had to say you know there's a lot of rumors that, that maybe there's going to be an Atlanta shakeup next yeah. season what are your thoughts on that and do you feel yeah. like we need a, a little cast shakeup listen I get it you know I you know I hear the rumblings as well um, my honest feelings is that the six of us are actually a great group I think if we had a little bit more time to build genuine friendships, I think what the fans are used to was when the show started, they were real friends. They all lived in Atlanta together. They had history. And it takes time to build that. No matter if you bring in a new cast, they're still going to be new to, to each other. So I think that now, especially for me, I feel like I'm really starting to get to know the girls. And now when I say something, it means something. You come in and you just start going off. It just, to me, it just feels fake and feels forced. And so I hope the fans will give us some time to create that. Either way, I've loved being a part of the platform and being a part with the girls, but we'll see what happens. Based on what she said, it seems like she would probably be okay if she wasn't on the show anymore. You know, she's got a lot going on. She's pregnant, about to expect her second child. So who knows if Sonia will be back, but let us know in the comments if you think that Sonia and Drew should be back, shouldn't be back. What do you think should happen with Atlanta next season? All right, moving on over to Mauricio, because he wants people to take a hike and F off when it comes to the status of his and Kyle's relationship. He said on the Skinny Confidential, him and her podcast, when I know what I'm doing with my marriage, I will let you guys all know. Everybody wants to know what's going on with my marriage. I do too. We're normal people. We're normal human beings. We're going through a struggle. We're going through issues just like everybody else does. There's no playbook for how to deal with it. He added, we're separated. That means we're giving each other time to allow things to happen, which means it can't change every single minute and every single day. He declared on the podcast that he isn't tuning into the season of Beverly Hills, and he has a theory that his marriage isn't being portrayed accurately. He said, I've chosen this year to not watch the season of Beverly Hills because I also know that they're dramatizing everything and there's a bunch of stuff that I don't even want to see just because it'll create more noise with me and more opinions. People that watch the show are all opinionated and they just don't realize that there are two humans on the other side of that opinion. That's really difficult. So it seems like, you know, Mauricio is taking a back seat on this one, but he does understand that people are very interested in his marriage because they're public figures. They put it out there. They put their lives on the show. So yes, people are going to have questions, especially since everything is still so up in the air. We don't know if they're headed for divorce, if they're headed for a reconciliation. They're still kind of in this gray area. So we're we're gonna have to wait and see what happens but you know the major storyline this season is Kyle and Mauricio's relationship so it doesn't seem like this is going to be a story that's dying down anytime soon all right well moving on over to Madison LaCroix well she threw some shade at Sutton Strack after BravoCon 
Madison said on the Housewives Nightcap podcast, one thing I don't like is when people know you and you've met and they've even had you to lunch, like Sutton, and then pretend they don't even know who you are when you're in the room. I was like, oh, okay. Madison claimed that Sutton gave her the cold shoulder at BravoCon after being asked if she was surprised by how fellow Bravo celebrities acted during the three-day convention. She said if she's calling me for meetings, then she can come up and say hello to me. It's fine. I'm sure a lot of people had some awkward run-ins at BravoCon. Maybe Sutton was distracted, not going to make excuses for, for her, but if Madison's right. If you could take a lunch, you could take a meeting, you can say hello in public. Well, Sutton, as we know, has been put on the hot seat this past week after your her Beverly Hills Magic Mike meltdown, the um, moment with Kyle, the name of name it, which has turned into a fantastic meme. But we sat down with Sutton recently and she talked about her words with Erica Jane. Take a look. Were you surprised at the way that Erica at that moment kind of let everything kind of roll off her back considering the history that the two of you have? Well, that's the thing is I didn't want it to t escalate mm -hmm. because I did not in at that moment in time I, w I could not have done an, an, a Sutton Erica brawl. Yeah, I yeah. couldn't have done it. No energy for that. Um, I really could not. Mm -hmm. my, I would not have been able to do it. And Erica handled it so beautifully, mm -hmm. and I appreciate that so much. Yeah. Seems like next week she'd kind of put you on the spot, though, based on... A little on bit. Got put on the spot. Little, yeah. Yeah, but okay. Mm -hmm. And that turns into a thing, but, you know, always on this show, you have to let it just run mm -hmm. its course and, um, and breeze through it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because it's always going to be okay. Mm-hmm. You know, there's no malintent with me, and uh, that's the truth. Right. You know, I just kind of, I, sh I show up, put on my microphone, and sometimes I say things that I shouldn't, and I always run into trouble. I always step into things, and... Um, that's what we love about you. <laughs> I'm all, but I'm always apologetic, yeah. mm -hmm. and I didn't mean to ruin anybody's time, mm -hmm. and I didn't mean to, like, squash the fun. Mm -hmm. um, I think we see going forward in Vegas that we do have more fun. You know, I... I'm a fun girl. Mm -hmm. I like to have fun. Yeah. That's kind of what I'm known for. So it, it, I was like, gosh, I'm, I really, I think I might have made it bad for everybody. Mm -hmm. So let me try to correct this. Yeah, and it seems like you did, like well, right away. You were like, okay, I need to. I'm really sorry. Yeah. I just reacted in the wrong way, or I overreacted. and. Um, and I was apologetic. Yeah, I feel like the two of them are never going to be best friends. All right, well, during a recent episode of Andy's Sirius XM radio series, he shared a few highlights from his weekend at BravoCon and confirmed that nothing happened between Bryn and Shep after they grabbed a drink together on the second night of the convention. He said Bryn, I think, had her eye on Shep, and I don't think that wound up happening. He noted that Shep was like a golden retriever with Bryn kind of following her around. He said, I think she was like, this is not gonna happen, so that didn't. He also teased that Shep was smitten, saying he came over to me before the Bravos. He was like, I am stunned by Bryn. She's so beautiful. She's so tall. She's really smart. She's a star. Well, we did catch up with Bryn, and here's what she told us about her love connections at the convention. Take a look. Did you make any connections this weekend so far? Connections? What do you mean? Romantic connections? Yeah, Is that where you're yeah, getting You know at? that's where I'm getting at, right? No, no. That Captain dude's cute. Yeah, it's Captain Jason. I know. I saw, I was at the Bravos. I saw, you know, yeah. Andy brought him over. Yeah, 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 he did. I was uh -huh. like, hi, sailor. Um, or captain. Um, yeah, he's a cutie patootie. So I'll slide into his DMs. Okay, perfect. Yeah, and I'm going to be like, I can't swim. Help me. <laughs> Men love a damsel in distress. <laughs> That's true. Did you meet Shep? I know that you... I did. Okay. I love Shep. He's really cool. Okay. He's very funny. Uh, and Andy was just telling me he's a massive, like, he's a book uh, fan fanatic as okay. well. Um, no, he's super cool. We're going to get a drink later. Oh, very like, nice. just friends, but, like, definitely. I like all those guys. Yeah. They're, fun. They're fun. You just want to hang out with them. I don't know if I it's good to date any of them but damn you want to hang out with them and get a drink and have them be like your guy like i have a lot of hot guy friends yeah. platonic you know and i think yeah they're really cool and finally things are heating up in potomac and we recently caught up with ashley darby who had this to say about the status of her friendship with candace dillard how are things with you and candace because i think she said in an interview not too long ago that i think at the finale the two of you may have had a conversation that you know maybe swayed your relationship in a different direction, in a more positive direction. Do you feel the same way? Yes. Mm -hmm. I think that it's complicated. Mm -hmm. It's very complicated. And I, I'm i trying to focus on the positives of who she is, her mm -hmm. talent, her beauty, her wit. She's very funny. Sure. We have a great time. Mm -hmm. Where we go off the rails is when there's conflict and how she handles conflict and her 
ability to be accountable mm -hmm. for what she says and does. Yeah. And um, that's not easy to do. I know that. It's very challenging. Mm -hmm. So I give her grace with that. But ultimately, yeah, we we are in a, as I said on the panel, 70% like place. Sure. 70, that's, a, that's a good thing. Yeah, she yeah. reciprocated that. Right. Definitely seems like things are on the upswing considering, you know, Michael Darby did sue Candace. There was a lot of tension between the two of them, rightfully so. So we'll see how that plays out this season. All right. Well, let's get into our social spotlight of the week and our thoughts um, go out to Dr. Nicole Martin from Miami who revealed that she actually lost her dad. She posted this on Instagram. I haven't been able to find the words and still can't. Everything happened so fast and it still doesn't seem real. Part of me is still waiting for one of your crazy phone calls. So many things left unsaid and moments we didn't share. Trying not to dwell on the missed moments and focusing on the improvements we made. You had a zest for life and I know you're having a party up in heaven. Rest in peace, dad. Love you. So we're definitely thinking about her. We saw, uh, you know, some moments with her father on the show. They're up and down a kind of roller coaster relationship, but, you know, obviously a very tough time. We know that she is expecting her second child. So definitely a silver lining in all of this. So we wish her well. All right. Well, that is it for this week's episode of Getting Real with the Housewives. Let us know in the comments your thoughts on on Atlanta, what you think is really going on with Kyle and Mauricio. So please let us know in the comments and we'll check in with you guys next week.